All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started here. This is uh, financial basics, uh, part of the Ignite process. And uh, this is uh, going to be a pretty simple uh, class, uh, the, just going into the, the absolute basics here. So this is just uh, sort of your thought process you should have when it comes to earning commission and how to handle your finances. Uh, and uh, then it's just sort of general strategies when it comes to making sure that you're making uh, financially prudent decisions throughout your career in real estate. All right, so let's get right to it. So this is, uh, I'm sure you're used to seeing this uh, throughout the Ignite process. But as you can see, we are on uh, the right side, run your business. We are at the end here, manage money. So what we are looking at, we can see kind of summed up here in the habits for a financially sound uh, business. Number one, set a profit goal that funds your big life and pursue the activities to achieve it. So just real quick, the, uh, the one there that I, the part of this that I think is important, not only is setting a goal important, and uh, there's going to be things that will be touched on uh, in this class that are going to uh, give you information that will help you when making your profit goals to make sure that it is uh, you know, realistic and attainable, all that sort of good stuff. But the thing that I think is always important to focus on is uh, your big life, which is, uh, which is how they're referring to it. But basically that is the, uh, the fundamental reason as to why you want to be in real estate, and why you want to find success. So whatever that is, be it uh, you want to be able to provide for your family, or you just want to have like a big pile of money that you can uh, dive into like Scrooge McDuck, whatever works for you is how it will work. Uh, so knowing that is really important because when you know that, then you can think, okay, so what do I need in order to uh, hit that goal? Then that can be part of what's going into your thought process when creating the profit goal. So then moving on, estimate, save for, and pay your taxes on time. So because uh, as a real estate agent, you are an independent contractor, uh, you don't do uh, your taxes the same way you would if you were a salaried employee of a uh, job. So, uh, and because your uh, salary will, or your uh, income for the year will fluctuate um, throughout the year and year to year, there are ways that you can calculate your taxes uh, during, uh, you know, throughout the year as you're earning income and uh, be able to um, uh, make sure that you're paying throughout the year. So then when tax time comes, you either owe nothing or very little. Uh, next is use the proven models and systems of the MREA chart of accounts. We'll get into that later. Uh, be fiscally savvy by reviewing your financials monthly. So this is a good one I always recommend uh, to set yourself up with a uh, accounting software. So these take a little bit of learning, but once you get it, it will save you a ton of time when you are doing your taxes by the end of the year. And it will uh, just help you stay organized because accounting software has ways that it can provide you with reports on things like what have you been spending your money on? What, uh, where has your money been coming in from? Uh, and more importantly, it allows you to, throughout the year, be uh, isolating the things that will be uh, tax deductible uh, when it comes to um, time to do your taxes. And uh, that aspect of what's tax deductible and not, uh, that I won't be going into too much detail of because it is technically illegal for me to do that because I'm not a tax accountant and I don't want to get in any trouble. But I will recommend that you uh, set up an accounting software so that you can stay on top of your finances and get in touch with a CPA or someone who will handle your taxes who can help you out through this process. Because as an independent contractor, there's a lot of uh, kind of money on the table when it comes to your expenses throughout the year. Uh, pay yourself a salary is number five. And the reason for that, and that is something that we'll get into a little bit more later, is that is about uh, controlling your finances. 
So it's just a way of giving yourself a, um, uh, a level of protection um, so that you don't end up late on your taxes or at the end of the year, you uh, are in the negative because you were paying yourself too much and you forgot that you also have to uh, you know, pay the county, for instance, or pay the state or the uh, country. And then uh, prepare now for a financially secure future. So the idea there is just start with uh, financial good, good financial practices now and have uh, a portion of your income that comes in, you know, part of that gets segmented into your salary, part of that gets segmented into taxes, and then part of that should be segmented into savings. So that is what number six is about. Okay, so let's go into these a little bit more. Uh, here's a nice quote from Gary Keller. And the idea there, once again, kind of just goes down to uh, your big why or what they call the big life. Uh, so just uh, pretty much there is uh, things that you can accomplish and things that can be done only when you have uh, money and it comes to making the right decisions so that you can earn the amount of money that you have as your goal. Okay, so here are two examples. The one on the left is uh, financially unsound, I'm gonna spoil it for you. And the one on the right is a financially sound uh, decision. So what you're looking at here is um, they're saying a commission was sold and the agent earned $9,000. Uh, Jessica Campbell got 5760, presumably after a split with the company. And so then she just puts all of it into her bank account and effectively, she's using a debit card, so all of it is in her wallet. And so the reason why that is unsound is because there are things that she's going to run into later in the year. And uh, who knows if how much of that 5670 uh, still remains. So you can see on the right what is recommended um, as part of a financially sound practice. So she sells the commission, she splits with the company, Jessica Campbell has a check for 5760. 1728 of it goes into her bank account and the rest gets separated into, or goes into her business bank account, excuse me, for future business, business expenses. And then the rest of it gets segmented into uh, a tax savings account, uh, which is broken down even further below with one being state and federal tax and the other being the self-employment tax. And then after she has put some into her business to be used to invest in her own business, she has put some away for uh, taxes. And then she is walking away at 2419 and she can walk away knowing that that is all uh, her money to spend however she wants. Okay, so here are some more examples. This is just breaking down this page again. So I feel like this is a better visualization of it because you can see on the right side uh, how she's breaking up the, uh, the tax savings in addition to having some put away uh, for future business expenses. So here is the millionaire real estate agent economic model that we mentioned earlier. And so the way that this was found uh, is that they looked at agents in Keller Williams um, across the country and tried to determine how they were uh, spending their money uh, and what were the best practices for uh, an agent. And the, what they came down to was that your profit should be 40% of your total income and 30% should go to cost of sales and 30% should go to operating expenses. Now, this is a uh, national look. So they were looking at agents from across the country and uh, they were looking at agents that have, um, you know, a lot of the agents they were looking at had a team or had uh, some other agent that they were working with, be it a showing agent or a um, listing agent, something along those ends. So that's kind of why uh, cost of sales 
is higher. And just to give, let you guys know, um, in case you are a little confused, cost of sale is expenses that have to happen um, in order to complete the sale. Like, so once the sale's done, there are uh, payments associated with it. So for that, that would be like paying out uh, the referral that you have on the deal or um, you know, paying for like staging, that sort of stuff is a cost of sale, stuff that needs to be done, getting it listed on the MLS. Um, and then most importantly, and what will probably be the biggest one for most agents is your split with the company. And, uh, and then operating expenses is just stuff for your day-to-day uh, -day life. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, give me one quick second. Uh, okay, so when, so this is what they see as the, um, the national look is that it would be a 30, 30, 40. Um, for most agents, most likely you would be seeing something that's closer to cost of sales being 10% or being essentially whatever um, company dollar you are contributing uh, with your split with the company throughout the year. And then operating expenses is usually around 20%. Uh, in Los Angeles. And that's just operating expenses, again, would be stuff like, you know, your car insurance, your health insurance, uh, just the stuff that allows you to keep uh, being a real estate agent. So all those sorts of expenses, buying new business cards, things like that. Um, any questions real quick before we move on? You can type them in the chat or just say something. Okay, so this is just a look here at um, the flow of money. And importantly, what they're doing here is they're differentiating between uh, income and profit. So uh, some people will think that, oh, I'm receiving $25,000 for this house. That's all my income that's going straight into my bank account. Uh, not the case. There are those expenses. And then what you're walking away with is profit. And that's what you should be looking at when you are setting goals um, is the profit. And that is what this table shows over here, which uh, would break down. Okay. So my profit goal for the year is, you know, say a hundred thousand. Uh, if my uh, total income or if my um, commission income uh, from selling a house is going to be 20,000 on average, how many homes do I have to sell? So it's not five, because even though five times 20,000 will give you 100,000, there are those additional expenses and the cost of sales uh, that will be associated with those. So being able to identify um, what your regular expenses are and how much you expect to pay the company will help you in determining the uh, base income, which will allow you to get to how many homes do I have to sell specifically, and uh, if you know, okay, so if my expenses, I can keep them locked in at whatever this is, uh, then I know that that is going to be taken out of my uh, total income. So my income needs to be a little bit higher. So now that I know that my income needs to be a little higher in order for me to get this profit, now I can think, okay, how many homes do I have to sell? And then you can start business planning from there. So, okay, I need to sell, you know, 15 houses in order to profit $100,000. Where are these houses going to come from? Uh, how many is that per quarter? How many is that per month? All that sort of stuff. And then you can go into, okay, so that means I need to be making this many contacts per week in order to be hitting this many appointments because not every appointment is going to lead into a deal and not every deal is going to close. So you can kind of work backwards and organize your, uh, your business, um, but it all will start with your profit goal. So that is kind of what they are uh, emphasizing when, they are, uh, when they're showing you these two tables. So this is again, uh, breaking down income versus profit here. This is where your income will come from as a uh, real estate agent. 
expenses. Uh, so first of all, they're talking about cost of sale. So number one is uh, commissions paid to the office. Uh, number two is royalty fees paid to KW. So um, a lot of people have questions with that when they get their first deal because there is a split to the company. And then there's an additional split. And that additional split is going to Keller Williams International. It doesn't get touched by Larchmont and it's something that is unadjustable by us. It's just something that's required for everything. Um, and so keeping both of those in mind is important. And then uh, commissions or splits paid to employers or independent contractors involved in sales. So that's what I'm talking about when agents will use a showing agent or listing agent uh, like on their team that they would then have to pay instead of uh, receiving the entire commission. So for the most part, um, most newer agents won't really have number three involved at all, but just know for when uh, you're a more successful agent and you're more, you're able to grow a team, that that's something you'll have to consider as well. And then number four is uh, referral fees. So referrals are a great way to, uh, to earn new business and, uh, and also make money if you're receiving the referrals. But I just want you guys to know not to shy away from uh, receiving referrals because you're worried about increasing your cost of sales. It is well worth it mathematically, will always work out. Uh, here we go into um, cost of sales. So I don't uh, necessarily wanna get into this because it is um, just math, but it is um, essentially just saying when you are looking at your um, GCI, so when you've got a deal, and you've agreed to two and a half percent, and then the house uh, or you know escrow closes, and the house closed for you know a million dollars. You use that number to come down to the GCI by taking the percentage of commission uh, multiplied by the um, sales price, and then you take that GCI multiply it by your split with the company. That figures out uh, the second box there on the screen. And uh, then the third one is times uh, 6%. That's for everybody. The GCI times 6% will be your royalty. And then that will give you net commission. And then there's ways to, and then these next steps are, okay, so what if you've capped on company dollar, but not royalty? Well, you would just not subtract company dollar. And then you've capped it on both you will then receive the total GCI. There will be uh, no net commission really involved. So that's what you're looking at there. Uh, now we are looking at just kind of stepping, uh, taking a step back to uh, picking your financial goals um, by using profit. So this is a formula that you can follow along with, but remember that um, the you know, it's not a perfect method of doing it because of the 30, 30, 40 split that um, the millionaire real estate agent book uh, has found to be the most common among successful agents, um, where ours is in Southern California specifically, it's more close to um, 10, 20, 70. So the math would be a little bit different here, but you can uh, kind of plug it in the same way where it's just going down to um, what I was talking about before, where you can figure out your profit and then you can, uh, when they're saying divide net profit by 60%, that's how they would then remove, um, they would show the total income you would want to receive um, prior to subtracting the cost of sales and the expenses. So from there, you would then, um, I believe, divide net profit by 30% in order to use the formula that we're using. And then um, that would give you your gross profit. And then you would divide that by uh, another 10%. I'm kind of confusing myself as I'm going through this. But if any of you uh, need help with this, I can give more time if you shoot me an email after this and I can break it down. Um, kind of more fundamentally for you. Um, why is operating expense lower in Los Angeles, cost of living, or because of average home price? It is um, the latter, 
it is because average home price is much higher that your operating expenses are not going to um, be as significant as a chunk because your operating expense won't really change um, too much compared to someone else, but you would be receiving a higher commission than someone in say, um, you know, a state where house prices are lower. Um, that's the idea there. And operating expense should be um, relatively consistent uh, as time goes on. Uh, okay, so then here they are doing the math um, using this method. So what they're doing is the net profit divided by 60 gives you gross profit, divide that by 40 gives you what your total gross commission income should be. So that means that you would need to make $416,666 selling houses. Uh, they, in this example, are using um, an average commission income of $7,500. So you would take that average commission, divide it into uh, this big number here, this $416,000 number to get uh, the total number of houses that they would need to sell, which is 56. And so this number here, this average commission income, that's going to be different uh, person to person. Uh, what you'd be looking at um, when you're making that decision is the standard pretty much across the uh, the state is two and a half percent. Usually some people can get it higher. Sometimes it ends up being a little lower, but um, usually you can think it's around two and a half percent. Just uh, if you don't have your own data to go off, you can kind of use that as the rule of thumb. And then um, you would look at average house price in the um, in your uh, geographic area that you would be focusing on doing your business, uh, and with that you would then be able to calculate what the average commission would be uh, should you be working in that area with the two and a half percent commission. Uh, you can figure out what your average commission income would be, and then you can take it into your uh, your gross profit to figure out exactly how many how many homes you would want to sell. Uh, anticipated cost of sale, here they are showing it as just uh, royalty and company dollar, and then their operating expense, um, which they have at uh, $125,000. And there's um, different things that we'll get into the, uh, the operating expenses. Uh, I can see if I can uh, find it, because I've got a... Uh, I actually was reviewing this not that long ago. So I want to see if it's on this one. It is not. Okay. All right, so some examples of operating expenses uh, would be stuff like lead generation. So if you are paying to get phone numbers or if you are doing stuff like door dropping or um, you know stuff like that, sending out mailers, uh, having a marketing specialist on your team or having so, you know paying for a subscription to MailChimp or some sort of client care uh, management system. That would be included in your operating expenses, uh, supplies, um, your own rent, uh, education and coaching. So for the most part, like education and coaching um, and uh, tech are included when you're working with Keller Williams because of uh, KW Command. So if you are using another service, um, you know, because like... Uh, Command has stuff for uh, your contacts and for managing your, your contacts and for setting up mailers and all that sort of stuff. So it does have that already implemented in the system. So if you're using a different one, um, you want to make sure you want to ask yourself, okay, is this um, additional expense necessary? Is it that much better than command? And 
um, when it comes to these expenses, just as, a, as another sort of uh, thing to have in your mind, don't think of them as just, oh, I'm going to spend this money um, because it's going to benefit my business. Like you really want to know that that expense is really more of an investment. So it's really something that is going to and can provably show that it is kind of giving you a return uh, on investment when you're putting money into it. So when you're doing your, um, you know, when you have something that's setting up mailers to, to send out to your, uh, your sphere of contacts that you have, um, make sure that you are seeing a return. And if you are not seeing a significant one, then maybe it would be okay to switch to the one that's included in command. And that goes along with, you know, you get a website through command, you can have, uh, you can arrange your taxes or not taxes. Uh, you can set up your to-do lists and tasks through command. So there's a lot of uh, the technology that a lot of people would um, kind of pay into that is being built up in uh, command right now. So always recommended to look into that. And then, so I'll just go down this list real quick here for uh, examples of what operating expenses would be. Um, so they're including salaries. So that's if you have an assistant, uh, lead generation, education and coaching, communication and tech, uh, occupancy, supplies, uh, auto insurance, and uh, equipment is the last one. Equipment and supplies, could not tell you what the difference is. All right, let's move on. Here we go on uh, the best practices again. These are a little bit more involved. Uh, so number one, gain clarity on your big life hopes and dreams. So that is, uh, you know, how much money do I need to live the life that I want to lead, uh, that I want to live. And um, that can help you in terms of making your, your profit goal. How fast do I want to get there? All of that sort of stuff. So that's what that's looking at. And it's not as important to kind of keep that in mind uh, as you're doing the more sort of uh, minutia feeling aspects of, uh, of, planning for, uh, you know, your, your business plan for the year. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind so that you can, you can make smarter decisions throughout and, uh, so that you can stay motivated, uh, set your personal and business budgets. So that one is, uh, going back to what we were talking about, about having a profit goal and an, uh, expense goal. So those can kind of be your, your budgets. So like that expense goal of what you think, like, okay, this is how much I'm going to spend every month. That would be your uh, business budget. And then the same deal, like, okay, I need to pay my health insurance. I need to pay my rent, personal budget. So being able to know those uh, distinctly, like, okay, one is rent and uh, auto insurance. And then the other is um, board dues, like for the uh, realtor boards, uh, you know, dues for the brokerage. Uh, other sorts of like, okay, I need to buy um, a physical mailer that I'm going to be sending out. That's going to be like every quarter. I need to have that included too. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, set up your business entity. So the reason for that is uh, is tax based, and it's easier for you to pay out a salary to yourself. Um, again, that is uh, that is outside of uh, basics, so I can't really get into it too much. Uh, open an additional bank account for taxes, expenses, and other savings. So this one is just to better stay organized so that you don't touch um, stuff that is put away for taxes. Uh, like we saw a few pages back, oh, this was a mistake. There's so many, so many more slides than I thought, uh, this one. So uh, those things in the orange on the right side, you could have different uh, sort of segments in your savings account. I mean, one would, you know, it would essentially be three total where you would have a business, a tax and a personal. So that's what they're talking about there. Let's get on back. Um, download and use the MREA chart of accounts. So that can be found on um, KW University. Um, and you can just get there. You can even, probably the easiest way to do it would be to just go log into command and then use the uh, search function. There's like a question mark in the top right. You would click on that and just search chart of accounts and it'll come up. Um, purchase and download accounting software. Highly recommended just so that you can better organize your expenses and, um, and then have an easy way of tracking it uh, later in the year. Hire an accountant, CPA, attorney, 
so that is, again, just to help you out uh, when it's time to do your taxes, because as an independent contractor, there's a lot of nuances and stuff that I can't really get into that they would be a huge help on. Um, set dates to calculate and pay your estimated taxes. Uh, usually this is done quarterly. And if you are uh, putting aside a certain amount, um, you know, what that amount is will depend on your overall income. Um, then you're just always kind of calculating it as time goes on. Uh, and then uh, you can pay quarterly uh, to um, the, the various governments that, that receive taxes uh, throughout the year. Uh, prepare for your future, insurance, savings, and investments. So, uh, you know, in addition to having money put aside for yourself, you wanna also make sure that you have money going towards your future self. That's the idea there. All right. Um, I believe that pretty much does it. This is, uh, yeah, this just kind of goes on into scripts and stuff, which we are not going to get into. Uh, so with that, I'm pretty much done. Anybody have any questions? Leave them in the chat, speak up. I'm here to help. And uh, if something comes up in the future, you can email me. My email is mca, it's m as in Mary, c as in cat, a as in apple, at kwlarchmont.com. Put it in the chat for you guys. Um, any questions along the way, feel free to, feel free to ask. Uh, all right, uh, any questions? Otherwise, uh, we'll be good to go and I'll let you guys free. All right, thank you everybody. Thank you all for coming uh, and uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day.